you know, when Fidel Castro came into office, you know what he did? He had a massive literacy program. Is that a bad thing? Even though Fidel Castro did it? You know what? I think te teaching people to read and write is a good thing. I have been extremely consistent and critical of all authoritarian regimes all over the world. The truth is the truth. And Can that's what I'm saying. Florida yes. and Cubans in Florida and Cuban Americans in Florida is particularly. But he said they were bad guys. He said Fidel was a bad guy. He was, all he was saying was there's this one thing no that they did. He's, and American he's, voters don't understand matter. nuance. They yes, hear they communism. No, no, they, no, no. This is, there's no way around that. This is as bad as, as you know who's saying they were good people yep. on both sides. Yeah. It's the same, it's the same thing. There's no way to get. I don't it, agree. Oh, I do. Once you start saying, well, you know, you know, Something. Hitler wasn't so bad because but he, he didn't say that. But no, he didn't say that. But to a Cuban person, yep. yeah. it's just as bad. I agree. It's Cuban just as bad. Yeah. Cuban Into refugees who lost everything in Cuba because of Castro. Yeah, it's as bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's okay. as bad. He can't love his literacy program and not, not highlight the fact that he's a We're all on the same page. Yes. Hello, family. Welcome to African Esquire TV. I'm your host, Tony Cherie. I want to talk about a lot of the discourse that is going on on mainstream media regarding Bernie Sanders and Fidel Castro. So if you haven't heard, Bernie Sanders, who is describes himself as a democratic socialist, he has... Um, been the front runner of the Democratic primaries in the United States. And he has in the past said that he supports some of the policies of Fidel Castro, who was the ruler of Cuba for many, many years. Uh, the policies that he supported are things like universal health care. A lot of people don't know if you go to Cuba, you have better health care than most people have in the United States, despite Cuba being such a poor country. The other thing that he supported was the literacy program. One of the things that uh, Castro did whenever he was put in power is he sent people throughout the country to ensure that their people have high literacy rates. In fact, they have. So this is just one example of a people who actually, despite the fact that they're in a country that is not the most powerful country in the world, they are doing a lot better than many Americans because America ha does have a high poverty rate, does have a high homelessness rate, does have a a dysfunctional health healthcare system, and so because of this, a lot of people would celebrate Cuba for these things. However, other people would never do such things. Now, this is a Pan-Africanist channel, and some of you might be saying, well, why are you talking about Fidel Castro on a Pan-Africanist channel? And so before I even get into this conversation, I do want to just give some backstory about Cuba in relation to Pan-Africanism. So we know that Cuba is a country inside of the Western Hemisphere that was is a socialist country. And they made a very public and bold stance that they're not going to allow Western capitalism and Western exploitation to no, to no longer have the, uh, the predominant effect on their people. They're no longer going to allow their to be oppressed they're no longer going to allow themselves to be taken advantage of by this system and so they overthrew overthrew the past government and it stated a socialist government now it's important to know that when they overthrew this past government the the, uh, the previous government there were a lot of people who were of the establishment a lot of people who were whiter because you know cuba just like the united states has white people black people they have people of european descent people of african descent a lot of the people of european descent were uh, exploiting the people of African descent, the same that you, same that you have in the United States, same as you have every single place where African people are, uh, it was a white supremacist country. And a lot of the people who were so afraid of socialism coming to that island were the white people. So whenever you hear people in Florida, for example, who um, are so against Castro, they hated Castro when he died, they were they were uh, having parades in the street. A lot of these people come from the upper class of Cuba who fled socialism, who did not want to live in a socialist country because they had so many assets. They were benefiting from the system of capitalism, even though it was actually having a detrimental effect on black people, they still benefited from the system. And so for that, they fled the country. And now they, a lot of them are throughout the United States and some of them are in, um, in Florida, for example. Now, it's important to understand this because if you say something in support of Fidel Castro, if you say anything that he did that's positive, people can't take it. They can't 
take it because they hate him and they hate him because they've been taught to hate him and not question why they hate him. This is people not just who are Cuban. These are people all over the United States. A lot of people just hate Cuba the same way, they, same way that they just hate, ca uh, hate socialism, although they love capitalism, despite the fact that capitalism has done a lot of horrible things, including slavery, for example. But they don't want to hear any type of discourse. They don't want to debate. They don't want to have any type of outside discussions. To them, Fidel Castro is just evil. We're not going to entertain anything that is positive because he's been painted so negatively by the United States government for decades and decades and decades. So any conversation about him being possibly good or having any redeemable qualities, we're not even going to get into that. Now, I want to talk about some of the things that Fidel Castro has done as far as Pan-Africanism. Um, a lot of you may not know this, but Cuba was actually very much aligned with the African people as they were fighting for freedom from colonialism and neocolonialism and all these types of imperialism, all of these systems of white supremacy that are global. Um, so I'm going to read through this article. Fidel Castro, a foreign, a foreign Pan-Africanist. Fidel Castro, the leader who destroyed the myth of the invincibility of the white oppressor, pr oppressor in Africa. Fidel Castro is the one man who history will remember as the guy who triumphed over colonialism. Naturally, any anti-colonialist champion would have had forays into Africa, a continent that white oppressor exploited to intolerable extents. The involvement of Cuba in Africa started with Algeria in the 1960s, and the country soon became a, a common feature of all independent struggles. In fact, this might have been the sole reason why Raul Castro was one of five leaders who gave addresses at, the, at Nelson Mandela's funeral. Cuba, under Fidel Castro, was a, ver was a veritable outpost of African interest, and Africa will forever be grateful for the late socialist veteran. Um, so the late Fidel Castro came into power in January 1959, and his country had no meaningful relation to Africa. However, as soon as he came into power, Cuba was sending diplomats to Africa, first the respected Che Guevara and Raul Castro. After moving... Um, after a moving speech that reflected support of the African struggle for independence in the United Nations, Cuba may, became a clear ally for African countries. Its military support particularly impacted the African landscape in Algeria, which got its independence in 1962. So dangerous to the white man's colonial edifice was Cuba that when rumors of, the, of a goodwill mission to West Africa did the rounds, the United States of America quickly blackmailed Nigeria, saying allowing the Cubans to be involved, let alone to open an embassy, would jeopardize U.S. aid in the area. However, by 1964, Cuba had five embassies in five of the most problematic countries in the West, Ghana, Mali, Algeria, Guinea, and Egypt. The CIA was well aware that Cuba was training African militia with no less than 100 Africans having been trained there between 1961 and 1965. So th just to you know, give a little commentary on this section, it's clear why the United States hates Cuba or hated Fidel Castro and still hates the, um, the administration of Cuba for the actions of Fidel Castro because he was very boldly and very outwardly challenging colonialism. We know, for example, that the U.S. has many, many, many assassination attempts on Fidel Castro because people who do things like this usually don't live to tell the story as Fidel Castro did. So we understand why the U.S. hated him because he was trying to encourage Africans to resist Western influence, to resist colonialism, to resist imperialism. And this, of course, comes against the interest of the United States. So it's clear why he, why the United States hates him. But the question is, to all the Black people, and I'm speaking to you, Whoopi Goldberg, who was on The View talking about comparing Fidel Castro to Hitler, why do you hate Fidel Castro? That's what I want to know. Don't tell me because some Cuban Americans hate him. Because if anything, you should say, okay, you hate him. Let me investigate why you hate him. I'm asking you, why do you hate Fidel Castro? Why do you feel like Fidel Castro should be compared to Hitler? I'm not saying that he hasn't done things that are human rights atrocities, but guess what? I don't know one leader in the world inside of a functioning country or any or an unfunctioning country that has not committed human rights cat catastrophes. And I will say that the United States of any country should not be in a position, a moral position, to try to look at Fidel Castro. I posted this on Twitter. 
who can name one U.S. president that has not committed the things uh, that has committed more atrocities, who has not committed more atrocities than Fidel Castro? Because every single one of them has. Every single one of them has been engaged with imperialism, has been has the blood of hundreds of thousands of people on their hands. You might not hear about these people, but trust me, they're all over their hands, all over the hands of this country. So it's always weird to me when I hear people who are supposed to say that they're progressive, say that they're for change, and they say that they're for human rights. When I hear them condemn Fidel Castro, but you don't have that same energy for the people of your own government, first of all, and you certainly don't verbalize why you hate Fidel Castro. Saying that other people, other people hate him or people from his country hate him, that's not good enough. It shouldn't be good enough. We should actually have to have a, a, a an actual reason why those people hate him. It can't just be, well, they seize their property. Okay, that might be something that uh, might anger them. But what benefit did, did that? What benefit did that do to the Cuban people who are actually in Cuba? What about the black people who look like you? What about that people of African descent in Cuba? There are many of them who actually love Fidel Castro, and that's the thing that I hate about how the media does things is because. They will, they will, whenever Fidel Castro died, I remember them showing so many uh, parades in Miami of people celebrating his death, but they would not show the mourning, the National Day of Mourning all throughout Cuba. The people who were flooding the streets, sad, crying, upset, the people who actually lived in that country. And they'll say, well, you know, those people are brainwashed. No, these are, pe these are people who have the same minds that we have, have the same sense that we have, to think that we know better than everyone else. This is the American mentality that people hate. The fact that you think that you can tell someone else, well, no, your leader who did all these things for you, he really wasn't good because, you know, we say that we, de we determine who's good. We determine who's the doing the right thing for the people, not you. These are the mentalities that are dangerous. These are the mentalities that has demonized many Black people, many Black leaders. Understand, these same people, and I'm talking about like Whoopi Goldberg, all these other people who are just blank, making blanket, state, blanket statements about Fidel Castro, these are the same people who would have said that Malcolm X is such a, was such a dangerous person. He's pre-preached hate. Well, we know better now that he was not preaching hate. He was preaching self-defense. It's very different than hate. Saying that you have the right to defend yourself, that's not preaching hate. It's hate if you are the one that's actually going out and hurting people, maybe, because you're saying, I hate your actions, but it's not It's not something that's calling for the harm of people who are peaceful. These are the same people who demonized Martin Luther King and said that he was disrupt a disruptive person to the social establishment, therefore he has to be taken out. Now, a lot of time has passed, so these people like Malcolm X and Dr. King, they're more celebrated. They're they're not tarnished. You have a lot of these same people saying, oh, we love Malcolm X. We love Dr. King. But trust me, if had it been back in the day when these people were actually in power, these people would not be supporting them because they don't support people today who are who stood for the same things. So it's important that we understand that these mentalities are often repeated. This is the media tricks, the media's tricks that it does to us. It has us afraid to question things the same way that people are afraid to question um to question the conflict with the Israelis and the Palestinians. They just want to say, oh, you know, Israel, de defer to Israel. Israel's always right, despite the fact that the Palestinians are are rightfully on their territory and they are the ones who are being demonized by the Israeli government. But if you actually say, hmm, let me actually look at the history. Let me figure out why we're going to support these people taking over their, their territories, even though there was previous agreements saying that you wouldn't. Let's question why. If you start questioning why, then what do you get? You're, you're anti-Semitic. Uh, you're, you're anti this, you're anti that. You're racist, you're this, you're that. These are the tricks that the media does in order to ensure that we fall in line, to ensure that we're afraid because we're afraid to upset people. We're afraid to ask questions. These are the tricks that are used. This is authoritarianism to me. It might not seem like it because, oh, technically, you know, no one's holding a gun to your head. But if you are using these manipulation tactics to make people feel forced to not ask questions, I'm not even saying you have to love Fidel Castro. Just ask questions. Why do you hate him? Why do you feel that way? If you're too afraid afraid to just ask that question, to actually do your own research, that you are living in an authoritarian regime and you are a slave to the outside establishment that is making you feel that type of pressure. Don't be mistaken. Um, so I want to, you know, scroll, scroll through. Um, and actually, I'll say if you want to read the whole article, it's on a, a, a website called The African Exponent. I'll put the uh, link on my, on my YouTube. But just as a summary, 
other things Fidel, Fidel Castro uh, su supported the anti um, apartheid regime, obviously, and that's why Mandela, Mandela was such good friends with him because he actually supported him. Um, something recent, you know, Hurricane Katrina, whenever our people were begging our own government to actually come and help our people, guess who was willing to send their doctors to New Orleans to help the people? Fidel Castro offered his help to the same country that has tried to kill him many times. And I'm not saying this, again, to say that there's no criticism that you can have of Fidel Castro. Absolutely. Let's have criticisms. Let's not be blind and let's not be one-sided. Let's not subscribe to these, these notions that people are evil just because someone tells you that they are, just because the media paints them as evil. We should be more intelligent than that. And it, it upsets me more when I see black people who have been the victims of this mentality, have been the victims of this, of this uh, try to kind of character assault this uh, that upsets me more when i see us trying to be the ones who are reinforcing these messages and just not asking questions so this is the way that the system has manipulated us the way that the system continues to have its power over us and these are the things that we have to ask questions about so as far as um bernie sanders you know show of uh, support for fidel castro if if that's the if that's how they take him out because he said that this person had a good literacy program and my thing is there are again if you look at i don't think people know what american presidents have ordered um i don't think people know what has been done in fact let me look at this article real quick before i close this video I just want y'all to understand the things that the CIA under the president's direction has done. This is an article that Boots Rally posted on Twitter and it says JFK, um, I'm sorry, CIA considered bombing Miami and killing refugees to blame Fidel Castro. Um, so after Castro's revolution succeeded and thousands of Cubans fled to South Florida, the agency actually considered murdering a boatload of refugees, assassinating exile leaders, and planting bombs in Miami, all so that Castro could be blamed for the chaos. The basic idea was, turn, was to turn the world's opinion against Castro and possibly justify a U.S. invasion by pinning the atrocities on him. The, idea, the details of the sinister plot are included in a summary about the Operation Mongoose, a 1960 covert operation hatched by the CIA under President Dwight Eisenhower with the aim of toppling communist Cuba. So, you know, I will post this article also because it's a good article to read, but I'm only making this point to say, and this same thing's being done with Venezuela, by the way. Everyone's saying, oh, Maduro's evil. Maduro needs to go. Maduro, Maduro. But no one can really say why. No one can really say what has he done. What what has he done that comes close to something like this? To being willing to kill innocent people just so that you can paint your your political adversary as evil? How how evil is that? I mean, how, how evil is that? People who are refugees, people who are the most vulnerable people in the most vulnerable position. You're willing to kill them just to paint someone uh, someone as being evil. And then there's the other thing. This makes you want to question every single thing that we've been taught. And that and we should, especially as black people who have been a part of this conspiracy, been the victims of this conspiracy, we should be questioning all these things. When people say you should hate this person, question it. Learn why why you should hate them. If you should, you know, learn. Look at their history. Look at look at what they've actually done. And what I've found personally is that that almost I would say every time that I've actually researched the people who the media said I, that I should hate, who the media said that I should look at as evil, as dictators, as authoritarian. Every single time I've researched those people, I, I found out that, no, that's actually not what it is. When you look at Gaddafi, for example, when you actually research him, what he actually did in his country, the fact that he was actually very loved in his country prior to the U.S. invasion, the fact that he was actually doing, trying to do things um, that would come contrary to U.S. interests, and that's why he was demonized. These are, the, again, the type of scare tactics that are used, and we should be the first people of everyone to question these things and to not just make these blanket statements and not just be willing to accept someone as wrong. I know why Hitler was wrong. I know why Hitler was evil. Hitler killed millions of innocent people, killed millions of people for no reason. I know why he was wrong. Now tell me why Fidel Castro should be compared to Hitler. Tell me why he should be com compared to someone who ordered the mass murders of people.
people. That just doesn't even make sense. Yes, I'm sure he's done things. And, and my point is that I really don't know anyone who hasn't. But there's a level of evil you have to be to be on a Hitler level. So my first thing would be, why are you making those comparisons? Why do you feel like you're justified in that? And can you back up these narratives? Or are you just being a puppet of the mainstream establishment's goal to demonize people who stand up against white supremacy and against colonialism? So that's all I'm going to talk about on this subject, you guys. I will see you all in the next video.